Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf on this bright and sunny Sunday here in Germany and as you saw from the title of the video this is a book haul of sorts and if you're following my channel for any length of time you might wonder because I never do monthly book hauls I, I just you know I buy a book and then I read it so I I don't haul books um, but once in a while I acquire a couple of books that I haven't read yet and that I'm really excited uh, to have acquired and that I want to talk to you about. And the first book is actually a book that I've read a couple of times, but I, I don't know, I gave away my copy and when I saw this one in a, in a used bookstore, I had to buy it and that is Radcliffe Hall, um, The Well of Loneliness. If you've never heard of Radcliffe Hall, you're really missing out. She was um, a British author born at the end of the 19th century. She, she died in 1943 um, and uh, she published this book in 1928 about Stephen, uh, a young female, female, but she was called Stephen because her father wanted to have a boy, um, and the the love she has, it's about a relation, uh, a lesbian relationship, Radcliffe Hall was lesbian herself, and it's, it's one of the first uh, novels of the 20th century uh, revolving around the theme of lesbian love. Now, when this book was published in 1928, it was banned, it was censored because people thought it was such an outrage that the theme was lesbian love. Now, don't get me wrong, this book is not sensational from our point of view. I think, if I remember correctly, the most sexual scene is a kiss. Um, but in the 1920s, it was considered a scandal because it was about two women being in love. And it's sort of loosely based on, on Radcliffe Hall's own life and uh, publishing this book almost destroyed her literary career and certainly um, uh, destroyed her reputation because she came out as a lesbian. So if you are interested in, you know, reading um, um, almost 100-year-old uh, book about lesbian love, uh, she writes beautifully, I can certainly recommend it and look at the cover. Uh, I mean, this is a, a picture painted by Tamara de Lempicka, who was a Polish artist. Around this, She lived around the same time as Radcliffe Hall. She was born a little later and she died in 1980. Uh, and she painted this Art Deco kind of style portraits. I, she's one of my favorite artists. I will leave a link if you are interested uh, to a BBC documentary about her. So, I love the book. I love the cover. Of course I bought it. And the next book I bought and want to show you is a book that I bought and will read in order to fill some literary blanks. And that's the book Summer Will Show, written by Sylvia Townsend Warner. I've never read Sylvia Townsend Warner, hence filling the literary blank. Um, and although she is a famous English author, one of considered one of the modern classics. Uh, she was born um, around the same time as the previous two women I mentioned, but this book is set in um, around 1848. Um, the main character is an English woman, uh, Sophie, Willib uh, Sophie Willoughby, um, who has a cheating husband and she sends him off to Paris. That's what the blurb says. Um, she wants to raise her two children, but then there's tragedy in the family. She moves to Paris as well, just in time uh, uh, for the beginning of the revolution in 1848. There she meets the ex-mistress of her husband, and then the story centers around um, uh, Sophie's life in Paris, a bohemian life, um, as the book blurb calls it, uh, but also it's a book of ideas around the revolution of 1848. Um, I would probably have never picked up this book because Sylvia Townsend Warner was just not on my radar. Shame on me. But I will read this as a buddy read with Sean. Uh, over at, uh, he has a booktube channel, Sean the Book Maniac. If you are not subscribed to him, you are also missing out because he is a fantastic booktuber. He's a Canadian living in Japan. And he had this book on his TBR and I'm eager you know, to fill in the literary blanks, like I said. So we will be reading this in June as a buddy read. And speaking of Sean, Sean, if you're watching this, you're always pestering me that I don't um, talk about 
Canadian authors enough. So here we go. Margaret Edward, I bought her short story collection published in 2014, The Stone Mattress, Nine Wicked Tales. Now, if you're following me, you know that I, I love Margaret uh, Edward, even though her work is often a hit and miss with me. Uh, her last book, When the Heart Goes, I think it's called, I didn't, I didn't like. Um, uh, but there are plenty of books of her that I really love, but I've never uh, read her short story collections. Um, and I want to read more short stories anyway. So when I saw this, um, I thought this is a good opportunity, you know, to, to flies with one stone or however you say that. Sean will be pleased. I read more short stories and it's even three stone uh, flies because it's also uh, Margaret Edward. And I love the, the cover, how the, the crow here picks the O from, from Edward. Um, so a sh short story collection by a Canadian author. The next book I want to show you, show you took some time uh, to get to me um, and I'm reading this for a Goodreads book club I'm a member of and that is K.R. Mira, Hangwoman, translated from the Mayalalam, Mayalayam by J. Devika. It was first published in India um, in 2012 and published in the English translation in 2016. Now, the book club uh, I'm talking about is uh, Tales & Co. run by Yamini, who used to have a fantastic book uh, tube channel, but she's taking a break. I hope it's only a break and that she will come back. But she's very active on Goodreads and she formed this uh, book club where we uh, read uh, non-fiction, uh, uh, historical fiction, but also alternating um, women uh, in translation from certain countries and for May it was India and Mayala Yam Mayala Yam yeah I think I say that correctly is an Indian language so uh, Mira is an Indian author writing in this language and I mean not only have I never read um, any book written in that language and then translated I didn't even know about this language. I know that in India you have, you know, I don't know how many uh, uh, different languages, uh, but this is new to me and it is about uh, a woman who becomes, like the title says, a hangwoman. Her uh, father is an executioner and when he dies a young woman um, uh, is his successor and becomes the first female hangwoman in India. And the book tells her story. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading this. And the last book of this book haul of sorts is also a book I bought to fill in literary blanks. And that's Helen Dunmore's Exposure. Um, now, you probably know that Helen Dunmore, she was an um, English author born in Yorkshire in 1952. And she sadly died uh, last year in 2017. She's a poet. And her last poetry co co collection, Inside the Waves, won um, the Costa Overall Book Award in 2017 posthumously. Now, I've read shamefully little um, of Helen Dunmore's work. Um, I read some of her poetry. I read The Birdcage Walk, um, historical fiction, also published, I think, a year ago. Um, but this is um, a book... Um, set in London during the Cold War in the 1960s um, and we follow a woman, Lily, whose husband has been arrested uh, presumably because he sold information or gave information uh, to the Soviets and then Lily starts to investigate um, and like I said, I want to read more of Helen Dunmore's work and I was also really in the mood for some, you know, thriller, crime, spy novel and I didn't even know that Helen Dunmore wrote these kind of books. So that's the reason I picked it up. Anyway, so these were my new arrivals uh, for this month. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments, as always, whether you read any of the books that I've um, uh, talked about or whether you're interested in reading them or talk to me about your new arrivals and when you bought, if you bought any new books that you are excited about. And I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.